Hi, I'm Battalion Chief Don Nelson, and welcome to another episode of With Summit Fire. I hope everyone had a safe holiday season now that we're uh, into February of 2015. Uh, we've been dealing lately with a lot of uh, frozen pipes, so please make sure you uh, keep an eye on that stuff, and if you have a problem, give us a call. Uh, what's been happening lately is I've gotten a lot of inquiries about the fire that happened in Edgewood, or Edgewater, New Jersey, the large apartment complex that burnt down. Uh, and a lot of people are asking me and, and other officers around town uh, if their buildings are safe. We have a lot of apartment complexes in town, and uh, people are asking that question. Uh, the, what was unique about the building in Edgewater, New Jersey, was that it was built from lightweight construction. And a lot of people want to know what that is. So this episode is going to be about that. What is lightweight construction? Uh, we're fortunate here in town that a lot of our older buildings uh, are solid construction. In other words, what, what I mean by that is they were built a long time ago and uh, they use the old-fashioned building techniques. Uh, some of the newer buildings uh, do use the lightweight construction. So here's, here's the question that, that I've been asked. Is lightweight building construction safe? As a firefighter, when I see a picture or I see a building built like this in the slide, it says, sends up a red flag for me. Not because the building's unsafe, but because it looks like, from the exterior, that it uses lightweight construction. And what I mean by that is you just look at the, the sheathing on the building is not your normal sheathing. It's new composite material that manufacturers have developed recently to make building a building quicker. It's just as good as the old construction. However, it's, it's, it's a lot quicker to use the new materials nowadays than nailing up separate pieces of wood. They can nail up a piece of... Uh, you know, four by eight plywood might take, you know, 30 or 40 nails. They can use this sheathing, takes half as many nails. Some say it's stronger than plywood. It doesn't rot, things like that. But a building, when I see a building like this, and most firefighters hopefully will agree, when they see a building being built like this, they automatically think of lightweight construction. So what is lightweight construction? And here's a definition of what light, lightweight construction is. And this came from the NFPA Journal, July, August 2009. And as it says, lightweight construction uses engineered lumber, a term generally used to describe a wood structure member that is fabricated through use of bonded fibers and materials put together as a composite joist or beam. Well, what does that mean? It means they're not using natural grown wood. They might be using wood that's been chopped up into many strands and glued back together. They might take a bunch of uh, lumber and build trusses, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But they're not using your normal, uh, what we call two-by lumber construction. And it goes on to say that um, this, this new lightweight construction is fine. Structurally, it's fine. It's engineered to stay up when it's built. However, when fire hits it, it changes the whole ball game. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Next slide, please. Here's what lightweight construction is. If you can see by the picture, it's a bunch of lumber, <laughs> just like anything else that's built out of lumber. It's a bunch of lumber put together. However, they, they built what's called trusses, and they use triangular shapes to make beams. Structurally, it's fine. Once the building's built and it has sheetrock over it and it's protected, it's fine. The problem with some of the lightweight construction is there's components of the lightweight construction that when exposed to fire creates a hazard for firefighters. Structurally, it's sound. It's engineered to stand up. It's fine. But when it's exposed to fire, much like normal construction, it becomes a problem. Now here's a picture of a building in town that I took a couple days ago. And we can see tr trusses up here. This is the attic space. Looks fine, it's engineered, everything's good. The only problem with that we see is in the fire service are these little plates here. These little plates are holding those trusses, the pieces of the truss, together. Not a problem until there's a fire. What happens is when, when metal heats up, and, and metal usually about 1,000 degrees, it expands. And when metal expands, these plates could pop off. Well, when that plate pops off, the truss is now weak, the structural support is gone, and it could collapse. Here's another building in town, right in downtown Summit. 
Beautiful building now. It's built. It's beautiful. Has steel frame, cinder block walls, lightweight construction floors and roofs. What does that mean to the average person? Nothing. When you're in the building, <clears throat> it just function like, like, so it functions like a normal building. There's, you'll never even know it's there. However, there's a fire. Again, these gusset plates are a problem. There's also a lot of lumber built into these trusses. You basically have a, lum a lumber yard inside the void spaces, and we know what fire does to lumber. It burns. So it becomes a, a bit of a problem when there's a fire. Structurally, it's perfect until a fire happens. Back to the original building uh, that I took a couple days ago. Again, more trusses. You see the, 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 um, the gusset plates here. This one has sprinklers above the ceiling. That's a perfect fire suppression system for us. It protects what's above the ceiling. There's going to be a sprinkler system below the ceiling, so it's protected both above and below. The fire report from Edgewater, New Jersey, there were no sprinkler systems above the ceiling. So what happened was the fire started, got up, up, uh, got up above the ceiling or the floor, wherever the case may be, and burnt, unstopped, through the whole building. And that's what happened. No sprinkler system. That's according to the fire report. I was not there. I just read the fire report. So next slide, please. Again, here's a picture of, a, of the same building. This is the sprinkler pipe right here. There's a sprinkler head. It's protecting what's above the ceiling. This is lightweight construction with, with sprinklers built in. Next slide, please. Again, just another picture of the stress system, uh, truss system. Here's that gusset plate I was talking about. You can see them. They're all over the place. Next slide. And here's an up-close picture. What a gusset plate is, it's basically a piece of metal that has a bunch of, uh, puts a, they put a stamp through it and they bend prongs over and the prongs stick into the wood about a half an inch. When this metal heats up, the metal could warp, pull away, and these things could all come, up, come apart and they collapse. Next slide, please. Now this is a unique thing I found in the building. Um, these are, this is a truss here. This metal, again lightweight, non-wood, is used to support the sheetrock once it's screwed to the ceiling. But the trusses are connected. This is a steel I-beam. The trusses are connected by what I call one by lumber. It goes over the top of the steel I-beam and connects to the truss on the other side. So you basically built a U-shaped piece of wood over the steel I-beam to support the truss. Structurally, it's fine. The weak point when there's a fire are these gusset plates. The other problem is there's so much lumber up here that it's basically, again, a lumber yard above your head. In this building, again, there's a sprinkler system in this area, so it's protected, which is a great thing. Next slide, please. Here's one of the things I was talking about with gusset plates. This is a wall. This is the lower beam of the truss. This is the gusset plate. If this gusset plate were to pop off, these two pieces of wood would separate and the truss would fall down. Not good for a firefighter if you're standing underneath it. Next slide, please. Again, just a picture of the attic space of this building uh, showing you the lumber yard is above your head. When there isn't a fire, it's not a problem. You'll never even know the difference. It's no different than any other attic space. When there's a fire and it gets up into this attic space, it becomes a problem. Just like in your house, if a fire gets into your attic and there's no sprinkler system, your attic is, again, a lumber yard. Next slide, please. This is a different type of truss. Before we were talking about wood trusts, trusts, this is a metal truss, parallel cord metal truss. We use it here in the firehouse when we had our renovations. Structurally, they're great. They're lightweight, easy to put in. They're designed to hold heavy loads, just like wood trusts are. The problem with steel, next slide please, is when it's heated up, it expands, as you can see right here. It stretches. Well, what happens is when this truss was heated up in a fire, it pushed the walls out because it expanded. Steel expands at 1,000 degrees. It expands about three inches, maybe. It pushes the exterior walls out, and everything falls down. If you're a firefighter standing underneath this, and that happens, 
<laughs> you're not you're gonna have a hard time. Uh, in fact, um, I don't know, 15 years ago or so, down on Springfield Avenue, 41 Springfield Avenue and Middle Avenue, Bell Atlantic Garage, similar truss system. We were on scene for seven minutes because there was a structure fire inside. The ceiling, the roof collapsed in about seven minutes after our arrival. So it happens. Again, structurally, they're fine. They're designed to hold their weight. They're engineered to hold weight. Fire is the enemy. Next slide, please. These are just some styles of trusses that are around. Uh, I built my own house uh, 15 years ago. My attic is like this. It's an attic truss. It allows me to store things in the attic, but it's built at a lightweight construction style and easy to put up real quick to, to build. The problem is, again, with the trusses, with those gusset plates, if there's ever a fire in my attic, my attic, my attic could collapse quickly. Next slide. And here's a quote I heard in class, which kind of stuck with me throughout my fire career. Man builds buildings to resist gravity. Man forgets gravity has a few friends. Weather, time, and fire. Friends of gravity are always trying to knock down what man builds. I thought that was a pretty unique quote. You know, we all, we're building all these buildings, and there are fire codes that help us to protect the fire code, uh, to protect the building, but gravity is always trying to knock them down. So when fire gets involved, or weather, or just time, not taking care of your building over time, it creates a problem and it's going to fall down. These are some other pictures I took the other day of a building here in town. And when we talk about lightweight construction, this is a unique picture because we have wood frame on the exterior, the old fashioned way of building a house or, or building. And then we have what relatively new, it's probably been around for 30 years, uh, lightweight steel studs. They're fine, structurally they're fine. They're easier to put up, easier to cut. The problem is steel expands when it heats up. So that's, you know, for every good, <laughs> there's always a bad. Next slide, please. Again, this is normal two by wood construction, just to give you an idea. Uh, when we go to a lot of buildings in town, we'll have normal construction. And then what'll happen is they'll start using new, new, new ways of doing things Instead of screwing the sheetrock directly to the bottom cord of the roof truss, they use um, steel spacers, all right? And then they just screw the sheetrock to those steel spacers. I guess the engineer or the architect decided this was a better way to do it. I don't know. I'm not an engineer, but this is the, this is the way they're doing it now. And that creates a problem for firefighters because when that steel heats up, the whole, se whole sheet of sheetrock could fall. And it, it takes a lot less fire and heat for the steel to heat up than it does for the wood to burn. So it's, it's kind of a unique situation. Next slide. Now, um, we went over, those first few pictures were of a commercial structure and kind of what they do in commercial buildings now when they're building uh, with lightweight construction. This is a, a single family home being built here in Summit. And uh, it has a combination of construction features, both lightweight and ordinary construction. What you're looking at here are wooden I-beams that they use for both the floor and the ceiling. And I have an example of a wooden I-beam right here. We got this from a builder several years ago. And it really, what it is is a piece of laminated wood, a bunch of pieces glued together, with OS and B as the web. As we, OS and B, again, is a bunch of pieces of wood chipped up, glued together with a bottom cord. Everything's glued together and it forms what we call a wooden eye beam as you can see by the profile. Structurally, they're great. They hold a lot of weight. You can span long distances with these things. Um, you could go, you know, 25, 30 feet with one wooden eye beam, probably longer. I'm not a builder, so I'm not sure of all the lengths. But in order to go 25 feet with dimensional lumber, I'd have to have a bearing wall somewhere, kind of like here that I could rest my dimensional lumber on because it only comes certain lengths and then I have to put walls to support it. But with these, we can span long lengths. The problem with these are, there's, there's a couple, everything's glued together. So what happens when you heat up glue? It melts. And what happens is the glue off gases and if the fire is close to this, obviously it would be close because it's off gassing, 
then that off gas might be flammable. That's one problem. The second problem is it's lightweight. There's a lot more surface area and less mass. Just as an example, this is probably a 2x12 wooden I-beam. This is a 2x8 piece of lumber that we had laying around the firehouse. See the difference in the dimensions? What do you think is going to burn faster? This, the dimensional lumber, or the wooden I-beam? My guess is on the wooden I-beam because there's no mass. This will burn pretty quick. And by quick, I mean, it, it, I don't, I don't, we don't have, well, there's, there's studies out there that have done time tests on how long these last. There's a lot of variables. How long has the fire been burning? Is it exposed, not exposed? You know, is it saturated? Are there a lot of holes in it from utilities? Because now there's more, more area to burn. But they are, again, structurally sound. They're a great building material. Just when they're exposed to fire, it's not the best thing. Next slide, please. Here we have just a couple pictures of uh, different construction projects from back in 2009. Uh, a laminated beam, again, another lightweight uh, construction component. What a laminated beam is, and I have an example here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but this is a laminated beam. It's solid, it's dense, but if you can see by the end, it's a lot of pieces of wood, little pieces of wood glued together. Makes it very solid, very dense, holds a lot of weight. It can stretch very long. Again, it's glued together under pressure. Is that glue flammable? I don't know. It would probably last a heck of a lot longer than this because of the dimensions and the mass. However, these are, these are uh, kind of used to replace steel beams. So you're not going to use these everywhere throughout the house, only where true structural support is needed. Okay. And again, in this picture, laminated beam, wooden eye beam comes together, held up by a metal bracket. What happens to metal? When it heats up, it expands. Um, these are all things that, as firefighters, we have to be aware of. Next slide. This is the, an attic picture, kind of hard to tell, uh, of a house being built here in Summit. And they're using dimensional lumber. They're using normal construction features. These are 2x12s. Okay. 2x12 roof rafters, plywood. The benefit of dimensional lumber is there's more mass as opposed to wooden I-beams. Both serve the same purpose, but as firefighters, we prefer this. It gives us more time to be in the building. Lightweight construction hinders the amount of time we can be in the building. Next slide. This is kind of dark to see, but this is a, a, just a picture of the laminated beam that was actually on the job site. This is the example we have here at the firehouse of both, both the same thing. This is a conglomeration <laughs> of many building styles here. Lightweight, um, excuse me, uh, laminated beam, wooden eye beams. You can see dimensional lumber down below over the windows and doors. So there's a lot of different building methods going on in uh, houses right now. So these are things to think about or, or, or commercial buildings. All right, next slide. One of the things you have to think about, void spaces. Fire likes to travel in void spaces. That's what happened up in Edgewater, New Jersey. Fire got into these unprotected void spaces and traveled throughout the building. Just another picture of void spaces, this time using wooden I-beams. The last picture was dimensional lumber. This is fire stopping to help prevent the fire from traveling from one compartment to the next. What was a little funny was, they, I'm sure they're not done yet, but this was a fire stop, but there was a one, about a one inch gap on each side, so fire could travel around that. They're gonna go back and make sure these are all sealed. Next slide, please. Many of us have probably seen this building in, in the area. It's not in Summit, but it's in a neighboring town. This is what they call a bowstring truss. You see this everywhere. Uh, supermarkets, large department stores, auto dealerships, uh, you know, bowling alleys, roller rinks. And what happens, what's good about this is with the bowstring truss, it allows you to have large open spaces with no columns in the middle so you can use all the area in the middle. Next slide. Unfortunately, uh, when there's a fire in one of these bowstring trusses, um, there's usually a problem. And this is back in July of 1988 over in Hackensack, New Jersey. Some people may have heard of this. 
Uh, Hackensack lost four or five, uh, five firefighters that day. Uh, they were inside the garage and the bowstring roof collapsed and they were trapped. Unfortunately, they did not make it out. So a lot was learned that day uh, about bowstring truss. Not that the fire service didn't know that before, but it was never communicated. And here's an example of what I'm talking about. Several years before the Hackensack fire, we actually had a fire here in Summit at the old Century Oldsmobile dealer down on Broad Street, kind of about where Sage Elder Care is now. Large bowstring truss garage and showroom had a fire in the showroom and part of the garage and the roof collapsed. And this was probably late 70s, early 80s, prior to what happened in Hackensack. Next slide. And this is just a couple of pictures we got out of the newspaper. Uh, Summit was very lucky. We only had a couple of guys trapped and we were able to get them out. But this was due to bowstring truss construction. Wasn't a lot of communication about it prior to Hackensack. It did happen here in town. Uh, we were able to get our guys out. But bowstring construction or truss construction has been around for years. And um, we could talk about all different types of construction that's out there. Uh, that's probably a six month course on the different types of constructions, different types of construction out there. I'm just talking about lightweight construction today. Um, but it's out there. It's structurally fine. It serves its purpose. It's designed to hold weight. It's designed to build buildings the way they're supposed to be built. The enemy of lightweight construction is fire. And it actually happened right here in Summit. And uh, we were very fortunate. So how do we prepare ourselves as firefighters for lightweight construction? Well, that's why you see our engines out all over town looking at buildings. I went out and took pictures of a building that's going up here in town so I could spread the news around the firehouse about the type of construction that's going on over there. We do that every day. Basically what we do is we undress a building when we go out and we look at the building and we try to figure out what's inside. We go inside, we peek through ceiling tiles, we'll go down in the basement, look at the flooring to see what the flooring's like. We go through, we do a, you know, we take the whole building apart so we know what's going on and then we, we put this into a uh, computer program database that we have here at the firehouse and we have it on computers on all the apparatus, we have it at a dispatch center. So when we go out to these buildings, we know what we're encountering before we get there. Do we miss some things? Absolutely. There's a lot of construction going on in town. We do work pretty close with the building department and they try to keep us abreast of what's going on. But we miss them. It happens. But we try to go out before things happen at a building to find out what's going on. Next slide. Now, the first question I asked at the beginning of the presentation is, light, is, is lightweight construction safe? Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with lightweight construction. It's the wave of the future. It's going to be here for a long time. It is safe as long as codes are followed and FD and fire prevention recommendations are taken into consideration. We do that all the time. We make recommendations to the building department about projects that are going on in town. We, we try to give them our two cents, so to speak. Uh, sometimes they take it into consideration. Sometimes it's just not a good idea. Uh, what can you do as a resident of these buildings or, or, or of a, a home like that? Just make sure your fire alarm system works. Make sure your smoke detectors work. Test them monthly. I know I test mine every other Sunday when I cook breakfast, so I know they work. Um, have a plan to get out of the house if something happens. Um, you know, do, do exit drills in your house. You know, do you, if you have small children, do they know what to do if the fire alarm goes off? Is, do you have a meeting place where to meet so that when everybody's out of the house, you can all meet in the same spot? The fire department pulls up, you can tell us everybody's out of the building, now we can fight the fire. Um, my job as a firefighter is not to put out fires, believe it or not. My job is to save lives. But if I pull up on a building and everybody's out of the building, my job just got a whole lot easier. We can put the fire out. That's not the hard part. The hard part is crawling around your house or around your apartment building, crawling on our hands and knees in dark smoke, not knowing where we're going because you know we're not in your apartment every day or your house every day, and looking for people who are still inside. We don't, we don't really want to do that. Do we do it? Absolutely, but we don't want to. But we'd rather you just practice these drills at home. <clears throat> Excuse me, get out of the house, have a meeting place. So when we pull up, we know you're out of the house. Call nine, if you, if you think you have a problem, call 911. We, we're here 24 hours a day. We don't mind responding. That's what we're here for. We like to respond on calls. Don't be afraid to call us. 
If it's an emergency to you, it's an emergency to us. So back to our original discussion. Is lightweight construction safe? Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with it. There's, as long as it's protected properly and maintained, there's nothing wrong with it. It's no different than dimensional construction. Uh, I hope I gave you a little overview of what lightweight construction is. Uh, it is in town. It's designed right. It's approved. There's nothing wrong with it. Just when, uh, you know, when the friends of gravity come along and try to knock it down, that's when we have problems. So make sure your smoke detectors are working. Make sure all your fire prevention or fire suppression systems that you have in your building are operational. If you have any problems, give us a call. We'll be glad to come out. Our number is 908-277-1033. We'll, we'll, we'll walk through anything with you. Don't be afraid to call us. And if you have any questions, make sure you call. Thanks for your time.